Okay, accounts and allocations. Um, let's go to the agenda. So the, we're gonna talk about the account types that we have at NERSC, and there's basically two. There's user accounts, and then there are allocation accounts. Next. So the two types of accounts. Um, so there's the personal account, that's your user account. That is a private account, it belongs to just you. It's associated with your login or username. And it provides two things, authentication, which is your personal identity, um, and authorization, which um, determines what you're allowed to access. Um, you can request an account on your own um, through our um, account request form, uh, or your principal investigator of your project uh, can send you a link um, to request an account. And that will be personalized to join their particular project. Uh, there are five primary account roles. Uh, we've got the PI, principal investigator, a PI proxy, a project membership manager, and a project resource manager, and then of course, a user. And I think the comma got moved wrong in the wrong place. Anyway, um, second type of account is the project allocation account, uh, also known as a repository or repo. Uh, it's like a bank account. So you use this to pay for your computer time and any storage that you use. Um, it's not really calculated in dollars since the government pays for it, but that's just kind of the idea that we're using. Uh, it's managed by the principal investigator and optionally uh, one or more project managers, um, the ones I mentioned above. Uh, all MPP users belong to at least one uh, repository or project. Um, and an individual can belong to more than one project or repository, but they will have one default project designated. And that can be set um, in IRIS, which we'll talk about later on. And next. There we go. So IRIS, that's our web-based information portal. It's a tool for users and project, um, project management. So you can go in and uh, check your daily balances. You can change your passwords, change your login shell, update your contact information. Um, the uh, PI and project managers can manage the membership and allocations. And you can re run reports um, on various things, which I forgot to add in there. Uh, different types of things like uh, how much uh, time your project is used over a certain time period, um, different types of um, job information and, and stuff like that. And the website is just iris.nursc.gov. Next. Okay, so our account policies. So all users must sign an appropriate use policy form. Uh, this is currently um, integrated into the account request uh, process. So if you fill out um, a form to request an account um, before you submit it, you'll be shown the uh, appropriate use policies. You have to agree to it, click on a CAPTCHA thing or a ghoul. I forget which one it is. One of those things that proves that you're not a robot. Um, and you can also go and look at the, go back and look at the actual policies if you use this um, a URL, iris.nurse.gov slash AUP. So we have our password policies. Um, currently, it's set to, you have to change your password every six months. Uh, that will soon be changing to one year. Um, if you haven't changed your password in this past six months, you probably recently received an email saying, Hey, you got to keep up to date. Um, you should not share your password with anybody. And we don't need to know what your password is. So please do not email it to us. Um, if you do that, we'll have to disable your account and force you to reset it one more time. Um, when you're trying to access um, systems like Cori, um, you will get logged out if you enter your logins incorrectly, your password incorrectly five times. 
but you can log into Iris to automatically clear those. Of course, if uh, you have a problem with your password and you can't log into Cora, you probably won't be able to log into Iris either. So if you go to the Iris login page, uh, there is a link that will let you uh, reset your password. Um, and if all else fails, you can always send an email to account support uh, for help. Next. So password rules. So when you set your password, we have a little uh, password strength meter and your password has to uh, register as either safe or very safe. Uh, there's no complexity rules regarding uh, whether you have to use upper and lower case or let digits, special characters. Um, <clears throat> but some of you who might have been around for a while, you know that we've um, had this format where you can use all those special characters. Um, the newer method we're using is um, like this one that has the, the words all concatenated together with dashes. Something that's easy to remember but hard to break. Um, there are passwords that sometimes do get past the, the, the strength meter, um, but we do encourage you to try and come up with something that's either more complicated or um, like this new method of using the words that you can remember uh, concatenated together. And this, okay. So, that's all right. Um, so in addition to your password, we're also using multi-factor authentication. So this provides an extra security layer when you're accessing Nurse. It's required for all users. Um, you, you set it up by generating a token in the IRIS website, and then you have to sync it up with some uh, software or app that can generate a one-time password for you, something like a Google Authenticator, or uh, you can download software to uh, a laptop or a tablet uh, like Duo or Authy. And we have a whole um, long instruction page on how to set up your MFA tokens and your authenticator and how to use it to log into NERSC at this uh, URL here. Connecting to NERSC slash MFA. And this is a little example of um, when you log into Iris um, and you go to the MFA tab on the left here, uh, you'll see there's a place where you can add a, a description of your token and then a button below that to add it. And when you click on that button uh, on the right, you will should be presented with this uh, QR code and some other information to use for either um, syncing up with the Authenticator app or your software. This is only shown once, and then once you close it, it's gone forever and you can't get it back. So you should have your software all set up and ready to go before you do try and create your token. Next. Um, we do not currently use hardware tokens. Um, well, some people can go out and buy their own and there's a way to set that up, but it's a complicated process. Uh, we do not issue tokens. That's why we went to the software apps um, to use for MFA. There it is, allocations. Okay. Okay, so principal investigators, PIs, apply for computing allocations through ERCAP, the Energy Research Computing Allocations Process. Uh, it's accessed through the NERSC Help Desk system, which you can act, reach through um, ERCAP.nurse.gov. It is used to um, request your original project, and you also have to renew, submit a renewal request every year, uh, typically in late summer. And when we open up ERCAP for renewals. We'll send out um, email notifications and it'll be published in our weekly um, e-newsletter. Uh, the information that we collect, um, things like science objectives and approach, um, your resource requests, uh, things like how much computer time is needed, 
how much storage space on the community file system and archival storage. Uh, we also collect um, for renewals uh, the publications that you've generated um, over the past year using NERSC resources. That's uh, one way that we collect information on the publications. It's rare that a project only lasts for uh, one year and doesn't renew. So that's this is the easiest way for us right now to collect publication information. It's just included in the ERCAP renewal request. Uh, these requests are reviewed by the DOE Office of Science Program Allocation Managers. Uh, they provide the awards. Um, and the awards are for approved projects are uh, announced in late fall, actually early December. Uh, the NERSC allocation year starts in January. Um, and ERCAP requests <clears throat> for new projects can actually be submitted throughout the year, not just during the, uh, the ERCAP renewals um, time, time frame. Uh, we have what we call exploratory allocations. Um, those are for people who want to get started with NERSC and haven't used our systems before um, and just need to dip their toe into high performance computing. Uh, those will also get um, go through DOE to be reviewed and approved. Um, and they will also have to be renewed for uh, the upcoming year. Next. Okay, Rebecca talked about uh, how we distribute our time. We have approximately 9.23 billion MPP hours for this year. And as she said, 80% uh, of that goes to regular DOE mission science. 10% goes to the ALCC, uh, Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge. Um, that's a separate um, request process that they put out uh, and they uh, do their own reviews and make their own awards. And we just provide the, uh, the uh, computing time and resources here at NERSC. Uh, we have a director's reserve. Um, those are for our special projects like the NESAP program. Uh, that's where the uh, exploratory allocations come from. Um, we have some education allocations for people that are um, giving college level classes that require MPP resources. And then of course, some staff use uh, just to keep our operations going. Next. There we go. Oh. Am I done? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sure I'm close to being done. Yeah. This is very important to most people, running out of time. Okay, so the computing allocations uh, are managed in two different ways. So the project gets um, a, a basic um, award from DOE for a certain amount of time to run. And then the principal investigator will distribute that to the users. So the PI will determine how much each user in the project can use of the total allocation, either as a percentage or as a fixed number of hours. Um, so if you as a user run out of time, um, you can still submit your jobs and they'll go into the overrun queue. Um, that's if your project doesn't have any time left at all. Um, but if, the, if your project does have time left, you do need to contact your PI and request from them an increase in either your percentage or number of hours. So if the total project runs out of time, the PI has to contact the DOE Office of Science uh, Program Allocation Manager that they were awarded the time from and request additional time from them. Uh, typically, the Office of Science programs will keep some time back, um, although sometimes there's a run and, and they don't have any time left and um, you're kind of stuck in uh, overrun queue. Uh, but again, so if the project runs out of time, you can still run a job 
it'll go into the overrun queue. It gets a low priority, um, but at least you're not totally stuck in the water. And next. Stuck. Um, OK. Uh, so there is a question, what are penalties of running in the overrun queue? Um, other than the fact that it's very low priority, I don't believe there is any, uh, but I'll leave that to uh, the people who are more familiar with that to answer. Anyway, here are some resources um, from the different URLs and where you can find other information about your accounts, um, allocations, how, how usage is charged, setting up your MFA, et cetera. And if you want to contact us and you need help, um, the help.nurse.gov is our help desk system. You can log in there with your username, password, and uh, MFA one-time password and submit a trouble ticket. Or you can send an um, email to either accounts at nurse.gov for account problems, um, allocations at nurse.gov for uh, allocation um, support problems. And I think that should be it now. <laughs>